When I think of an altar, my mind runs back to being a kid growing up in church, especially being the pastor's daughter and how we were taught to respect the altar. You don't play around the altar. You don't touch it. You don't go anywhere near it. And just how sacred that was and what that meant. And then even when you consider the road to the altar, what people go through, the pain, the rejection, the hurt, and all of the things that people bring to the altar, sickness, that come for healing, that come for deliverance. And the fact that it's somewhat of a monument that represents the spirit of God in the place. And that means so much to me because at the end of the day, I always want to be where the spirit of the Lord is. And so the altar is such a special place. And I thank God just for growing up in an environment, knowing that I could go to the altar and that the Lord would meet me there. Welcome to season seven of the gospel Renaissance, formerly the sanctuary Sunday school. I cannot believe that it's been seven years. I know it's been a while since I've recorded, but I could not allow this seventh season to start without doing the lesson. So I just jumped right in. If you've been here over the years, please stop in the comments and say hello because I have missed you so much. And I've also felt you praying for me because I have needed it. If this is your first time here, welcome. You are invited to enjoy these lessons with us and let's get right into this lesson. This week's lesson is Abram builds the altar and here he's called Abram, but this is Abraham that we all know and love. And the thing about him, he's named or nicknamed the father of the faithful because of the way that he obeyed God. God told him to leave his father's house and everything that was familiar to embark on this journey of faith. And one thing that's always been so striking about me, about Abraham, is because I'm that person. I like to know the entire plan before I move. I want to know A to Z. And, you know, I have, sometimes I have to relinquish control and give it to God. But Abraham did not even live to see any of the promises of God manifest. It all happened after he died. Yet he obeyed and he followed just like God was right there in front of him. And that has always been a point of encouragement for me, the way that Abraham had the faith to obey God. So he left, he left everything again, everything familiar to follow God. And he was 100% committed. And then let's look at the promises God made to him. God told him that he would be the father of many nations. He told him that his seed would be so great until it would be numbered like the sands of the sea and of the dust of the earth or the stars in the sky. That's how great he would be. And then I love this one. He told him that all of the nations of the world would be blessed through his seed. And that's something that is so powerful for me, you know, and as saints of God, as Christians, as children of God, or whatever we want to call ourselves, we want to think about that. What kind of faith legacy, right? Are we leaving for our seed? You know, we have wills, we have trust, we have all of these things that we leave so that our kids will be set when we pass on. But what kind of legacy of faith are we leaving them? What are the promises of God in our lives? And that's why I love Abraham so much. And we see here that Abraham was rich. He was doing well and God was blessing him. He was blessed because he was not afraid to step out on faith and do what the Lord told him to do. Now, when Abraham left, he did take his nephew Lot with him and they began to grow and there started to be problems because it was too many people and too much livestock for them to be able to work together peaceably. So Abraham looked at the land. He said, look, look at all of this land. It's plenty of space for all of us. And then what he did, I love what he did here. He allowed Lot to pick which land he wanted. So Lot picked. And then when you look at the commentaries, it appears that Lot picked what he thought would be the best land or the most profitable piece of property. And so that's what he took. And Abraham, again, he let him pick first and then he took what was left. And Lot took the land and he went about his way and he went and settled where he had chosen. And then Abraham was left there in Canaan. And this is where God told him, he said, look to the north, look to the south. 
Look to the east and to the west. And everything that you see belongs to you. And, and every time I read this scripture, it does something to me in a different way. Because when we live in a time where the enemy is on the prowl and he wants to take things from the people of God. But when God has given you something, when God has promised you something, it's yours. And there's nothing that anybody can do about it. He said, this belongs to you and your seed. And not only that, he said, Abraham, I want you to go. Abram, I want you to go walk this land. Go walk the route. And everywhere the sole of your feet touches. And, and it's so powerful when you think about the promises of God, because the promises of God are true. There's nothing that any man on earth can do to make the promises of God not come into fruition. And you have to remember that because when I was growing up, they would tell me that the devil is a liar. That he is, but he's a little bit more than a liar. He's a deceiver. And if you let him, he will convince you that what God gave you doesn't belong to you. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. He told him everywhere you look, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, the east and look to the west. It's yours. And I'm encouraging, this lesson is for me. I'm encouraging you today and myself to claim and walk into what God has promised you. The promises that God made to you, they're still valid. They didn't expire. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The promise he made to you, he's going to keep it. And don't allow any situation or circumstance or person or trial or tribulation to convince you different. So after Abraham obeyed God and he stepped out on faith and he went to the land that God told him to go to, after he settled the little problem with Lot and after he had settled into his land, he built an altar and he worshiped the Lord. And that is so important. And, and here's what I love about this again. He built that altar and worshiped the Lord based on his promise. He hadn't gotten it yet. He hadn't walked into it yet. It hasn't been manifested yet. He built that altar and he worshiped the Lord based on the promises of God. I challenge you, whatever it is in your life that you need, whatever the promise is that you're trusting God for, I dare you to walk into your sanctuary and walk up to the altar and praise God, bless him, worship him in advance for the promise. Because if it is promised by the Lord, it is definitely going to come to pass. Let's take an example from Abraham and Abraham's faith. And see, we have it easy today. We don't have to build an altar. I actually had the opportunity being a pastor's daughter. I saw my dad actually build an altar in our church. But right now, today, we don't have to go build an altar. We don't have to go find the stones. We don't have to go find the wood. All we have to do is go into our sanctuaries, our places of worship, and go to the altar. Put it all on the altar, whatever your heart's desire is. Did you not know that God created you and he created your heart so he knows the desires of your heart because he placed them there? And God would not promise something to you that he's not going to deliver. He's not a man that he should lie. So I want you to trust God and stand on his word, stand on his promises. And just like Abraham built that altar unto the Lord, we want to go boldly before the throne of grace. And we want to ask God for what we want. And more importantly, we want to worship him for the very promises of God.